this video, I want to talk about writing an exponential model. When we talk about an exponential model that grows every iteration, we can sometimes call this a discrete exponential model because it jumps forward at discrete time intervals. We write that f of n equals a times b to the n, where b is the growth factor, a is the initial value, n is the iteration. We can use t instead of n for the iteration, so t might be the number of years, months, weeks, days, hours, etc. since the growth or decline began. Here's where we add some new stuff. The rate of increase or decrease is denoted by r, and it's always written as the decimal equivalent of the percent. The growth factor, which is what's actually in the exponential model, is given as b equals 1 plus r, and it represents the percent remaining after each iteration. Let's look at two examples. For example, if the population increases by 8%, then our R value would be the 8% or 0 0.08 whenever we do it with any math. The growth factor is what remains after each iteration. So if we're growing by 8%, then what remains after each iteration is 108% or 1.08. We can get that by doing 1 plus R, which is 1 plus 0 0.08. Now, on the other hand, if the population decreases by, say, 15%, then R is actually negative. It's negative 15% or negative 0.15. That means the growth factor we would calculate by doing 1 plus R, which in this case would be 1 plus negative 0.15, or 1 minus 0.15 and that gives us 0.85, which means that every iteration, there's 85% of the previous iteration there. There's a lot of different ways we can indicate exponential growth or decay in words. So we can talk about exponential growth, let's say we're using an R value of 10% or 0 0.10. To talk about exponential growth, we could say it increases by 10% a year, it appreciates by 10% a year, it gains 10% a year, rises 10% a year, or earns 10% a year. I'm sure there's all sorts of words I haven't thought of that also would give us the same kind of growth. For exponential decay, that would be an R of negative 10% or negative 0 0.10. We could phrase this as it decreases by 10% per year, it depreciates by 10% per year, it loses 10% a year, falls 10% a year, spending 10% a year, giving away 10% a year, etc. Let's look at a couple of examples. Suppose we start with a bank account that has $1,000 and it earns 5% interest every year. Let's start by declaring our variables. So we have a bank account, let's call that a balance. So let's let B, capital B, be the balance of the bank account. And then we're calculating interest every year. So let's let T be the time, and you better not just say time, it's the time in what? In this case, it's the time in years. All right, so now let's find A, R, and B. So A is the initial value. In this case, that's $1,000. R is the rate of increase or decrease. So in this case, the rate is 5%. It's a positive 5%, and that's going to be a decimal value of 0 0.05. B is the same thing as 1 plus R, or what remains after an iteration. 1 plus 0 0.05 is going to be 1.05 or think of that as 105%, it's growing. From this, we can write an equation for this model. We could say that capital B of T is equal to, we know the model should be A times B to the T. So in this case, it's gonna be 1000 times 1 1.05 in parentheses to the T. Let's look at a decay problem now. We have a population of a town is 50,000, it's decreasing by 6% a year. Again, let's start by declaring our variables. So let's use capital P for the population of the town. And T, lowercase t, will be the time. We better state what units is in. So this is the time in years. It's not always in years. When we talk about things like bacteria growth or compounding interest, it might be months or hours. So just be careful about that. Don't ever just say time. Time has a measurement unit too. All right, so let's see if we can nail down A, R, and B. 
A is the initial value, our initial population is 50,000. R is the rate of increase or decreasing. In this case, we're decreasing by 6%, so we would write negative 6% or negative 0 0.06 when we write it as a decimal. B is just 1 plus R. So that's going to be 1 plus negative 0 0.06, which is going to be 0 0.94. In other words, when we lose 6% a year, we have 94% remaining. Now we should be able to use that to write a model for our function. We want to have P of T equals, and again, it's going to be A times B to T, so in this case, that would be 50,000, left parentheses, 0 0.94, right parentheses, to the t power. Got that? Great, because now it's your turn. I'm giving you four scenarios, and for each scenario, I want you to, surprise, surprise, declare the two variables, then identify the growth rate, the growth factor, and the initial value, and then write a model for the scenario. So pause the video and give these four problems a try. Okay, we're back. Let's try the first one. An endowment of $300 million plans to give away 10% of what's left of the original fund balance every year. So we are starting with $300 million. In order to not write out 300, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 I'm going to cleverly define the variable as being in millions of dollars. So B is going to be the balance of the endowment in millions. And so then my initial value is going to be 300 because I've written that in millions. See how that works? Okay, then we want to give away 10% of what's left every year. So we're declining. Our rate is going to be minus 10% or negative 0 0.10. So B is 1 plus R. So that's 1 plus negative 0 0.10 which is 0 0.90. There's 90% remaining at the end of every year. And the time is going to be uh, t time in years. Okay, so now our model. Let's write b of t equals the initial value 300 times left parentheses, and then our growth factor 0 0.90, and that's raised to the t power. Hopefully you got that one. Let's move on to the next one. The value of a $120,000 house increases 3% every year. So let's let t be the time in years. And again, to make our model a little easier, we could let v be the value of the house in thousands. Now, you don't have to do that part, but if you do the value of the house in thousands, you can get away with writing 120 for the initial value. If you did just the value of the house in dollars instead of thousands of dollars, then your A value needs to be 120,000. My rate is going to be a 3% increase, so that's a positive 3%, or a decimal value of 0 0.03. The B value is 1 plus the rate, so 1 plus 0 0.03, and that's 1.03. This means Every year, we have 103% of the year before. Our model would be capital V of T equals the initial value, which for me is 120, might be 120,000 for you. Just depends on how you define it. And then inside of the left parentheses, I'm going to write 1.03. That's the growth factor. Then a right parentheses and raise that to the T power. Hopefully you got that one too. Third problem, every year Mary spends 20% of the remaining balance of the 20K she inherited. So time is in years, let's define that. T is time in years. V is the value of the inheritance remaining. And this time I'm gonna uh, not put it in thousands just so you can see that it works both ways. So in this case, I'm gonna let A be 20,000 because I didn't say it was in thousands, right? Uh, my, and again, you can do it each way. You just have to define it. It's totally fine. 
Um, I tend to like the smaller numbers because they're easier to graph in Desmos. So uh, you don't get so much decimal round off error and things like that. So these are probably better if you do define them in thousands or millions or whatever you need to. Uh, the rate here, she's spending 20% a year. So that's a minus 20%. And as a decimal, that would be minus 0 0.20. The B value is the growth factor. That's one plus negative 0.20 which is 0 0.80. In other words, every year there's 80% remaining from the previous year. Our model is going to be V of T equals 20,000, left parentheses, 0 0.80, right parentheses, to the T power. Last problem, the value of an airplane that cost $1.2 million depreciates 12% every year. So it's going down by 12% every year. T is time in years. These were all kind of boring problems since they were all time in years, but again, that's not always the case. V is going to be the value of the airplane. And I'm gonna actually add here, it's T years since purchase, because purchase is what starts the problem out here. And this one's going to be in millions as well of dollars. All right, rate, growth factor, initial value. Well, the initial value is 1.2 million, so just 1.2. It's depreciating 12% a year, so that's minus 12%, which is negative 0.12. And then the B value will be one plus negative 0.12, which is gonna be 0.88. In other words, depreciating 12% means that 88% remains every year. Our model is going to be capital V of T equals 1.2, that's the initial value, then left parentheses 0.88, right parentheses raised to the T power. Hopefully you are now a exponential model making expert.